So we're gonna use uh, cross products to solve proportions. And we did this a little yesterday and it's, it's just taking it to one more step. So you see here the cross products property. Uh, all that is telling you is that when you have proportions that are equal, it's set up so that this, um, the cross opposite sides, if you multiply them, they should equal each other. Does that make sense? It's hard to say that. I am drawing on here. Has she never paid attention to my lecture? No, I don't look at the book. I just like listen. Listen? Oh, yeah. No, I draw all over the book. So let me give you an example. If I have, uh, well, I'm just going to use that one up there. If I have 3 over 4 and it equals 6 over 8, the way you make sure that the this is an equals, equal uh, proportion, is the word I'm saying? You say this times this, so I would say 4 times 6 equals the other cross product. So if I do the math here, I get 24 equals 24. Okay? So now the cool part about that is when they change this out and it becomes a variable, you can solve for it. So let's see how to do that. So in your journals, example one. So we have 8 over x equals 6 over 15. So a way to write this is you would say 8 times 15 equals 6 times x. So what's 8 times 15? 120. Mm-hmm. 120. And then how do I solve for six, uh, x? You just divide the 6 out. So x equals what's 120 divided by 6? Ta-da! Pretty easy, right? No, you're fine. So I'll go over it one more time. So we did cross product, so we did 8 times 15. And then we have 6 times x, which is 6x. And then to get the, uh, we simplified 8 times 15, which is 120. And then to get the x by itself, we divided both sides by 6. So the x is by itself because these cancel. And I'm left with x equals 20. All right, let's do a slightly more complicated one. This is example two. If I have four over x and it equals eight over x minus three. See how you guys are getting into the ones that used to look really scary? Yeah. They're really not. So again, we're gonna say cross multiply. So I'm gonna do four times x minus three. And you see how I put it in parentheses? Because that means we can distribute and then on the other side, I'm going to do 8 times x. Now it's an uh, equation we can solve. So the first step is to distribute 4 times x, which is? Mm -hmm. And then 4 times 3 is 12. And then I just rewrite the other side. So now we combine like terms. So I'm going to move the 4x over to the other side. So I have negative 12 left over here. What's 8 minus 4? Very good. And then how do I get the x by itself? Divide by, Divide by 4. So I get x equals negative what? Three. Negative 3. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's look at example three. So this is gonna be a word problem. So the first part of a word problem is figuring out how to set it up. So when you read it, as soon as you hear a number, think about how you're gonna put that into an equation. So each day, the seals at an aquarium are each fed eight pounds of food for every 100 pounds of body weight. So they're fed eight pounds for every 100 pounds of body weight. A seal at the aquarium weighs 280 pounds. How much food should the seal be fed? So if you look up here, I wrote 8 over 100, and this is the food, and this is the weight of the seal, right? So X equals 8. Perfect. So we're trying to figure out how much food over a 280-pound seal. <coughs> so 
Now we're just going to cross product and solve. So we have 8 times 280 equals 100 times x. What's 8 times 280? 2240. Very good. And then we divide by 100 to get the x by itself. It's in the book. I mean, he's so smart because he follows along in the book. He totally did it in his head the whole time. So what's 2240 divided by 100? Yes, he can do it in his head sometimes. But on the big ones like that, he's just being intelligent and following along. So 2240 divided by 100, you just move the decimal twice to the left, and you get 22... Point four like, what? I'm sorry, Geraldi, I spoiled your secret. I should have let it go for a little bit longer. I know. He is real smart because he follows along. So the seal gets how much food per day? 22.4 pounds. Make sure you're labeling this because it is a word problem. Anytime you see a word problem, know you've got to label it. All right, let's do a couple more of these. You can choose whether or not you want to put these in your journals. It's the guided practice, page 121. But if you're not going to write it, just pay attention up here. 4 over A equals 24 over 30. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I get 4 times 30 equals 24 times A. What's 4 times 30? Um, Very good. And then you divide both sides by 24, and you get A equals what? A equals... Mm -hmm. Waiting on Emma. She got it. She's the only one who has her calculator out. All right, Ben! Look at him! Don't hit me. Oh, she was writing. Good job. Yeah, so then you just added another. Yeah. Yep. That's how I do it when it gets into the numbers. I don't know the multiplication. I'll, I go where I know and then I just keep adding. Yeah. All right, number two. Oh, you want me to pause for a sec? Yeah. Okay, so I have 3x equals 2 over x minus 6. So set this up first. We're going to cross. It doesn't matter which one. Mm -mm. Nope. I like to do the one I'm going to do the most work to on the left, but it really doesn't matter. Whatever your personal preference is. Okay, now we're going to distribute. We get 3x equal, or minus 6 times 3 is 18. Now we need to move the x's on the same side. You could move the 2x over, which is normally what I would do because it's smaller, but then we got to move the 18 a bunch. So I'll, in this case, I'll deal with a negative number because it eventually becomes positive. So I get negative 1x, and then I just divide by negative 1. So x equals 18. All right, let's do one more of these funky ones. Is the IXL I gave you doesn't have the funky ones. It has the really easy ones. So I just want to make sure you guys know how to do these. All right, again, cross. So we have 5 times m minus 6 equals 4m. What's my first step? Yep. So I get 5m minus... Good. And I'm going to do the same thing and deal with the negative number because I don't want to do two extra steps. So I get negative 30 equals... What do you use, like, uh, minus 4M? You can't do that? You can. You just put a zero over there. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So what would you do? You want me to show you? Yeah. Let me finish this one real quick. Divide by negative 1. So I get M equals 30. So let me do it uh, in another color. So I had 5... Whoa, that's a highlighter. That's not what I want. Go to my marker. There we go. So I have 5m minus 30 
equals 4m. So just for fun, I'm going to subtract 4m here. 4m, so I get m minus 30 equals 0. So then I just plus 30. And I would get m equals 30. Whatever way your brain makes sense, I don't care. Both are correct. Then do it that way. Yep. Any, if you ever move everything all the way to one side of the equation, you just throw a zero over there so that way there's a placeholder. Yeah, it's not wrong. So you can do it either way, whichever way your brain is happy with. Cool? All right. Am I done with the examples? Oh, we're going to do scale drawings. You're going to figure out how to do a scale. This is if you want to be an architect. Or if you're a nerd like me and likes to design my own house once in a while. All right. So you wrote the definition for scale drawing. Somebody tell me what a scale drawing is. Yes. So basically, you see this drawing? This is a scale drawing. It is a small drawing on a piece of paper that is representa representing a house, which is much bigger than this piece of paper. They show you what the scale is. So in this case, the scale is 1 inch to 12 feet. So when you take a ruler, if I measure 1 inch, one inch that in reality is 12 feet okay. on the actual room. So that's what scaling, scaling it is, a scale model. They'll actually build this as a 3D model, you know, that you can look at when they're fixing to do big high rises and stuff. They'll build a 3D model so you can see it. So what we're going to do is learn how to take the scale, 1 inch to 12 feet, and solve for, like, say the garage, we know that it's 1.5 inches. How would I solve for actually how many feet it really is? Cool, right? In this case, I would do 1.5 times 12 and then divide by 1, right? Okay, why do you have 1.5? Because right here, I estimated that was an inch, so I'm going to say the length of the garage is an inch and a half. I'm just guessing. I don't actually have a ruler. So uh, then you do 12 times 1.5, which is. Come on, Geraldi. Huh? I didn't hear it. 18? So in reality, the garage, right, this length is 18 feet. So that's how you do scales. Yeah, this is when my nerd really comes out because I used to love this. I did CAD in high school. Loved it. CAD is computer-aided drawing. You're basically doing architecture. You're drawing blueprints. Yeah, they had it in my school. They don't have it anymore, which is really sad because we need architects. But All right, so let's do example four, and then we'll be done. We're going to use a metric ruler and a map of Ohio to estimate the distance between Cleveland and Cincinnati. Let me take a picture of this map. <laughs> Somebody was going to do it. What's that from? The broad change. Ooh, my map's really big. All right. So we're estimating the distance between Cleveland and Cincinnati. And since I'm a visual person. From the map scale, one centimeter, see we look right here, we have the map scale. So one centimeter Over eight. is 85 kilometers. Uh, if you measure this length right here, on my screen it's bigger than in your book of course, it is about 4.2 centimeters. And we don't know what the kilometers are, but now we can solve for it, can't we? So we're going to cross multiply and say 85 times 4.2. 170. Uh, no, that's got to be like 3 inches. Yes, it is 300 something. What? 362. 357. 357 is correct. Oh, I said 362. You were close. You were very close. So the answer is 357 what? Um, yep, it's a word problem. Any questions on how to do that? Scale scale models, it's really actually very easy once you learn the trick. And this 
I know we, it's like one example, but this is probably what you get tested on more on your Iowa testing, is how to do scale and proportions. So keep after it. It's new. Just remember cross, cross products. So you're doing numbers 3 through 14 and then 19 through 30, and then IXL C5.